Hi, my name is Dan Greenwood. I am a brand specialist with Alpine Electronics. Congratulations on your purchase of an ILX W650. This video is designed to help you get your radio installed into your car the right way. Now, for today's example, we're going to be using a 2017 Nissan Rogue. Chances are your vehicle is different, but the installation should be similar. Now, if at any point this becomes a little overwhelming, we would highly recommend contacting your local Alpine authorized dealer, and they should be able to help you out. So first things first, let's get this radio unboxed and see what all comes with. And of course you get the head unit and protective wrapping. You're going to have your manual and installation guide as well as your warranty card. And then a bag that's going to contain your harnesses, your uh, USB cable, microphone, stuff like that. We're going to go over that here in just a second. All right, let's take a look at this bag and see what all it comes with. I might have already opened this earlier. You're going to have your main harness. We're going to go over this here in just a moment. You'll have your Bluetooth microphone. We're also going to go over where to, uh, we recommend installing this in the vehicle. This is called your AV and pre-out harness. Now this is where if you have a backup camera or a, maybe a front camera, that's where it'll connect as well as if you have an aftermarket amplifier or maybe the KTA 450 power pack, which we'll be talking about a little later on, that's where that would connect uh, for your audio input. It will also give you a USB extension and this is something we really recommend using. We're gonna go over that a little bit later. And then of course, uh, mounting screws. This is how you're gonna mount the radio into your dash kit. First things first, let's talk about this harness. Now, if you don't remember any of these colors that I tell you, that's okay. We actually do have a page in our manual, which I'll show you right now, that is also gonna give you all the information you know about your wiring, what each wire does, and where you should be connecting it, okay? So, just to kind of go over this, these eight wires you see right here, they're uh, gray, purple, green, and white. These guys are actually your speaker outputs for the built-in amplifier inside of the head unit. The red wire is called an accessory wire. This is actually what's gonna tell the radio when to turn on and off. The blue wire is an antenna wire. So if your vehicle has a powered antenna, uh, this is what will actually tell the antenna to turn on and also give it power. Uh, we'll be going over that a little later in the install. This is a remote wire. It is a blue with a white stripe. This is what tells aftermarket amplifiers to turn on and off. And then of course you have your main ground wire and then your 12 volt constant wire. This is like what would always give power to the radio. It's also, you might have heard the term memory wire. That's also what the yellow wire is. Now we're gonna be a little different in Alpine radios. These two wires are gonna be pretty important for the installs. One of them, especially if you're doing a backup camera. We'll start with that one. The orange white wire is what is actually going to be called the reverse wire. This is what's going to tell the radio that your vehicle is in reverse to display the backup camera. We're going to be showing you a little later how to connect that in the vehicle. The other wire is also extremely important. This is yellow with a blue stripe. This wire is the parking brake wire or e-brake wire, whatever you want to call it. This is how you access the menu and the radio and be able to go through the settings. This is an extremely important wire. Without this, you're not gonna be able to get to a lot of the stuff in your radio. So we're gonna go over how to do that today as well. All right, next up, let's get the factory radio out of the vehicle. So if you're wondering how to do this, there's a really good chance that in the uh, dash kit that you've purchased, there'll be an instruction manual telling you exactly how to do this. There's also a good chance it'll tell you what tools you need. Now for today, these are some of the tools that I might need. I might not need all of these, but I like to have them on hand just in case. So first things first, we'll need some kind of pry tools. Now we normally do recommend plastic, that way uh, helps prevent scratching anything in the car. That's what these guys are here, they're pry tools. You might need a ratchet. Uh, the size socket you need will really depend on what kind of vehicle you have, but there's a really good chance it'll be either a 10 millimeter, seven millimeter, sometimes maybe an eight millimeter or it'll be a Phillips. So that's what we have right here. Now, if you like to do it by hand, then you're set. Now, if you're like me and you like to use power tools, we also have a drill and an impact with the Phillips bit, and I also have a 10 millimeter bit on an extension right here. Uh, that's really everything you're gonna need 
to pull the factory radio out of the car. Next up, let's uh, go ahead and get into the vehicle, get it removed, and then we'll continue on. All right, now we're in our 2017 Nissan Rogue. And before we start wiring up the harness and doing the install, we're gonna need to remove this factory radio. Now, before we do that, I like to kind of go over and double check all the features that the car comes with to see what we can maintain. So let's go ahead and get it turned on and see what all this thing has. So right off the bat, looking at the steering wheel, I see steering wheel controls. That's how we get volume, track information, as well as I see phone control for uh, answer hang up for Bluetooth right here. We want to keep those. Uh, looking at the radio, I notice satellite radio, but when I go in here, it's not active. So we're not going to worry about satellite radio today. Uh, what else do we have? We have a CD player. Let's make sure there's not a CD in here. That way we don't accidentally leave it in the radio. Looks like it's empty, so we're good there. What else does it have? Let's check the backup camera. Yep, so backup camera installed in this vehicle and it comes on the factory screen. So we're gonna wanna keep that as well. There's one more tool that I'm gonna be using today for this install and that is gonna be a digital multimeter. Really, really highly recommend having one of these because this is what we're gonna be using to test our reverse trigger wire, which will be uh, Normally a 12 volt positive when your car's in reverse and also your parking brake wire which normally goes to ground when you enable your parking brake. Remember those two wires we talked about in the harness that are really important to hook up? This is one of those tools that we really do recommend to test the factory wiring to make sure you're connecting to the right one. So we're going to be using one of these today. Now if you don't have one of these or maybe that scares you a little bit, that's okay. We really do recommend maybe reaching out to your local offline authorized dealer and they can probably help you out or maybe even continue the install for you. All right, so we are in search for the parking brake wire in this vehicle because as we talked about earlier, the parking brake wire is very important in our install. Now in the 2017 Rogue, with the wiring uh, diagrams that I found online, I found that the parking brake wire is actually right here in the kick panel. So we're gonna go ahead and test that right now. And what you're gonna need is your multimeter and you're gonna wanna set it to this part right here, the, the lines, that's actually continuity testing. And what happens here when you test that is whenever your probes touch, you'll hear it beep. So we're gonna put one end, the black one end, which is the ground onto some metal in the vehicle. There's actually a bolt down here in the kick panel. We're gonna put our other one in the wiring that we found here that is uh, supposed to be our parking brake wire. And it's sitting in there like that. Without, with the parking brake disengaged, we are noticing that we don't hear anything. Now let's engage the parking brake. And now we're hearing something. What that means is we are getting ground whenever this is engaged. So we found our correct wire. So this is what we're gonna to wanna to connect to when we're doing our wiring harness. All right, before we get to removing the factory radio, we're gonna go ahead and remove the negative terminal from the battery. All right, let's get in the car. All right, let's get this factory radio uninstalled. First things first, we're following the Metro directions that came with our install kit. So we're gonna go ahead and start from the side of the dash and work our way over to the radio. Now, of course, your car will be different if you don't drive one of these. Success. Now that we have our factory radio removed, let's go ahead and remove this A-pillar in preparation of running the microphone wire. Now some things to notate here is we have a harness running down here. We also have an airbag. We're gonna to wanna to be careful with this airbag. We don't wanna run a wire in front of it, but since this wire is here, this is what we're gonna run our Bluetooth wire, uh, microphone wire down with. So let's go ahead and grab that microphone. Let's go ahead and put it in the vehicle right now. All right, we have our Bluetooth microphone here and let's get it installed in the vehicle. Now there's gonna be a bunch of places where you can install this. My favorite is actually right above the rear view mirror in the headliner. The reason why I recommend putting it there because it's centered the vehicle, it's gonna be away from your window, which could possibly give you some wind noise. It's also gonna uh, not be blocked by your visor here. So if you ever put your visor down because the sun's in your eyes, you're not gonna have your microphone right behind there. It also gives us a great spot to hide our wiring just right up in the headliner. We're gonna show you how to do that right now. So let's get this in here. Now you wanna be careful with your headliner. If you, you don't really wanna pull on it too hard because you can 
damage it. So I got the clip in here. I put it in the middle. Clip the microphone. I like to leave a little loop of wire there just in case. So it's not being pulled on it by any, any way. And then you just tuck the wire into the little lip and the headliner. And then of course, I point the microphone at the driver. That's it for mounting the microphone. Next step, we're gonna secure our wire down this harness. And we're gonna use my favorite thing in the world, zip ties. All right, I have my zip ties here. Now I'm just gonna run it along this harness and zip tie it down. That way we don't have to worry about the wire coming loose. And I'm also away from the airbag. So, nothing too fancy, just a few zip ties to keep the wire out of the way. And then with your wire cutters, or in this case, flush cuts, we're gonna cut the, axa, the uh, excess off the zip tie. All right, next step is we're gonna get this wire from the A-pillar area to behind the radio. Now, depending on your vehicle, there's gonna be a few different ways you can do this. In this vehicle, I'm actually gonna uh, use a big fish line and I'm actually gonna come from the radio opening to this corner. Now, if you can't do that for whatever reason, then you can come down to your above your kick panel and then run it across underneath the dash. Now, if you're gonna do that, be sure to secure the wire uh, to any kind of uh, harnesses or anything that are already down there, because the last thing you want is for your wire to come down in front of your feet when you're driving. It could be very dangerous, so be careful of that. All right, I got my line over. I'm just gonna grab a piece of tape here. I'm just using electrical tape. And I'm gonna tape this to the end of that. Then I'm just gonna pull it on through. And there we go. Now I like to leave about a foot or so behind the radio. And then I'm gonna use an extra zip tie to, secure, uh, to wind up the slack and just tuck it down in the pillar. Now with the wiring ran, let's get the bay pillar back on. All right, a pillar is installed. Next up are the tools you're gonna need to wire up your harness. Now there are multiple ways to connect wires together. Today we're gonna to talk about the right ways to do it and we're gonna point out a couple of the wrong ways too. We really recommend avoiding. So first off, let's talk about the tools needed. So you'll need some kind of wire cutter, wire stripper if you need that, the uh, wire crimpers. Now this is gonna be if you're using something like a butt connector or a what we call a bell crimp cap. Now if you're going to go the soldering route, which is what we're going to be doing today, of course you will need some solder and a soldering iron. This is a battery powered one and this is a corded one. There's also butane ones. There's a lot of soldering irons out there. Uh, now if you're soldering, the, you're going to need to insulate and cover up your connection. So there's a couple ways you can do that. We can use heat shrink tubing. And if you use heat shrink tubing, you will need maybe a heat gun or a torch or lighter or something. I really do recommend the heat gun route though to shrink the tubing around the wire. The other option is tape. Now be sure to use good electrical tape. This is uh, Super 33, it's what I recommend. Um, now this tape is Tessa tape. Now Tessa tape's optional. If you want to, you can cover up your harness and uh, kind of protect it. We'll go over a little uh, of that later in the install, okay? Now. Ways to not connect the wiring. You do not want to use these guys. These are wire nuts. This is more for home electrical wiring. It is not suitable for a car. You do not want to use these. And as you can see right now, they do come apart and they're also taking up a lot of space behind the dash. So you, you really want to avoid those. Another uh, thing you do not want to use your install, scotch tape or masking tape, something that's not electrical tape. You do not want to cover up a wire with a tape that is not insulating. That's what electrical tape is for. So really avoid using this. This is for wrapping presents, not uh, doing a radio install. All right, next up, we're gonna take a look at all the parts needed to do the install. 
Now, first up, dash kit. Now, there's a good chance you'll need a dash kit for your car. Now, there's a couple of cases where you might not need one, but there's about 99% chance you'll need a dash kit. There's gonna be multiple types of dash kits. Some of them are very basic like this one, where it's just mainly a trim ring and some mounting brackets. Some of them are gonna be a little more advanced where they might actually move your AC controls over. Uh, now, to find out what exactly kit you need and all the other parts, we really do recommend doing some research. Now, there's a few companies out there that have taken care of a lot of this for you and they can take, really take the guesswork out. Uh, you have Metro Electronics and their website is on the bottom of the screen. Uh, and there you can actually search your vehicle and it'll spit out all the parts you need for your install. There's also uh, Pack Audio. This is their website. And just like Metro, they're gonna allow you to search your vehicle and they'll show you all the parts needed. There's also Skosh. And this is their website. And once again, they also have resources there. And another good one is Maestro. And Maestro is actually, they don't make very many dash kits, but they make some integration harnesses and uh, that's another option for you if you need uh, a harness or maybe a steering wheel control interface. So let's go over the parts. Uh, like I said, started before, you have the dash kit. Now this is not necessarily the dash kit for the Nissan, but just here it as a representation. This is gonna be your standard wiring harness. Uh, this is actually what we'll work on the install for today. Uh, now if you have a vehicle that doesn't use a harness like this and maybe uses something like this, that's okay. This actually will uh, help maybe even make the install easier for you. And we'll go over that here in a little bit. Uh, this is another part here that's gonna be uh, camera retention. So uh, we did, when we went to the Nissan earlier, we noticed there is a factory backup camera that does come up on the factory screen. We wanna maintain that. So there are harnesses available for most vehicles that will allow you just to plug in and keep the factory camera going. Let's talk about these harnesses. Now, like I said before, we have a basic harness. Now these basic harnesses are really just gonna give you your power, your ground, your accessory turn on, and your speaker wire connections. Now generally they're not gonna give you reverse and parking brake like we're gonna to need today. Now for, for today's install, we're gonna hardwire those and we're gonna be showing you exactly how to do that. Now let's say your car uses something like this. And these typically, will uh, you'll have a lot of options and it really depends on your vehicle, but they, typically give you parking brake and reverse trigger. Uh, now, if that's the case, definitely follow the instructions that are included here and double check the wiring colors because they might be a little different than what our Alpine harness has. And uh, make all your connections properly, be sure to do your testing. And if that's the case, then awesome. That means you actually don't have to run any extra wires in your vehicle. There's also a chance that some of these even have steering wheel control modules built in. Now for today's install, we're gonna be using a secondary module. Uh, but if you have the option for one of these, it does make the install a lot easier. All right, let's take a look at the harnesses needed for this vehicle. First off, we have our Alpine radio harness. Now this one's already been installed before, so it might look a little different than yours. A couple of the wires are gonna be a little bit shorter, but all the wire coloring pinout is exactly like what you're seeing on your radio. We're gonna go over some of those connections here in just a second. We also have our vehicle side wiring harness here. And one thing to note, on the back of the package, they actually do list what wires are what and what color. So that's handy to have. Now for this vehicle, we do need an antenna adapter. So we have an antenna adapter here. I actually went ahead and put a little crimp connector on here. That way it just plugs right into the antenna wire on our uh, harness here. Now we, since we have a backup camera and steering wheel control harness, this one looks a little messed up, but we also have this harness here from Metra. It's sorry, it's not in a packaging, but this will actually give us our camera output as a, as a little uh, transistor to power the camera. Our steering control module will plug in here, and then this will plug into the back of our radio to do our steering wheel controls. And we're gonna clean this up a little bit and when we wire up our harness, okay? So when we look at our wiring colors here, we're gonna notice that we have almost all the same wire colors between these two harnesses. Yellow is gonna be your constant, black is ground, red is gonna be your accessory, that's what tells the radio to turn on and off. There is a blue-white wire here. Uh, we're actually not gonna be needing this for this install. And then we also have our four speaker wires. Now on this harness, there's gonna be an orange wire. This orange wire, if you look at the back of the wiring uh, harness packaging, it does say illumination. This is what turns on with your dash lights. Now for an Alpine radio, you actually don't need to hook this, this wire up. And you might get a little confused 
because we have an orange white wire on our harness. Now this orange white wire, if you look at our manual, is actually the reverse trigger. So we're gonna be sure to notate that, that we do not connect this wire to the orange wire in our harness. So what we can do now is I'm gonna go ahead and start prepping up this harness with the heat shrink tubing. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and start connecting everything where the wires I'm gonna not connect at first are gonna be the uh, power antenna, remote wire, the uh, parking brake wire, and the, uh, the reverse trigger wire. We're gonna connect the rest of these up. Now we're also gonna need to connect these up with some of the wiring from this harness. So be sure to follow your manual for whatever parts are needed in your vehicle, okay? All right, so I'm at the point where I'm gonna hook the reverse signal wire to our radio up. Now in this harness here, I've read the manual, and this wire on the harness is actually the reverse wire, so we don't even need to go find it in the vehicle. Now, if, if for whatever reason your vehicle does not have this option, you don't have any kind of harness, it's gonna be very similar to the parking brake where you're gonna to need to find the wire in the vehicle, and what it's gonna do is it'll give you a 12 volt positive whenever you put the vehicle in reverse. Sometimes you can find it in a kick panel, sometimes you have to go all the way maybe into the trunk of the vehicle and get it on the reverse uh, light bulb. It just really depends on your vehicle. Now if you do have a smart harness, there will be a wire in the harness, uh, very good chance there will be, that will have a reverse trigger wire. Also want to notate here that this wire color is not the same as ours, so make sure you read the manual so you, so you know that you are hooking the reverse wire up to the correct wire, okay? Now when hooking up the speaker wires, you want to really look close at the wire because one side will have a black stripe, and that's the negative side, and one side will be solid color. So you want to make sure you hook that black stripe up to the wire with the black stripe on both harnesses. Okay, we have completed all of our connections here. We're just going to wait for all these solder points to kind of cool down, and then we can slide our heat shrink over each connection and then use our heat gun to shrink it down. Now sometimes if you have a couple of wires sticking out that are a little sharp, you can flush cut it just to smooth it out. All right, we are ready to use our heat gun. All the connections are made. Everything is secure, everything feels smooth, I don't see any wires sticking out, so we are ready now to just uh, uh, do a couple optional steps here. You, you can um, either do some zip ties and uh, clean up your harness, that way the wires aren't just sticking out like that. You can, you know, simply just put a zip tie around and secure it down like, th like that. Uh, nothing wrong with doing it this way. Now what we're going to do today is I'm actually going to use Tessa tape and I'm going to wrap the harness up to make it look more like the factory wiring. All right, we are set. So now we have our steering wheel control interface, which we will plug into the vehicle. We're going to follow the directions uh, on how to do that. Then this is also, I remember, our pre-out and camera harness. We're also going to be plugging this into the vehicle. And when I, what I can do right now is on the rear view camera input, I can go ahead and plug this cable in because that is our factory camera. So we're gonna go ahead and have that taken care of. That'll plug into the radio. These two plug into the vehicle. This goes into our steering, our steering wheel control interface module. And then this is our main radio plug and this is also our steering wheel control input on the radio. I went ahead and just ran it with this wire because that's gonna go to the same place. Now with these three, and we talked about earlier how we have a power antenna wire that is the solid blue. That is actually, if you have an antenna adapter like this and it has a blue wire, that is actually what you're gonna connect it to. And I like to use little crimp connectors like this, that way I can disconnect it if I need to. But uh, this is gonna plug in right here. Yep, and then we're set there. Once again, this will go to the vehicle. And then this one, uh, remote wire with blue with the white stripe, that is if you add an aftermarket amplifier. We're not gonna be doing that today, but down the road if you decide to add an amplifier, I like to leave this out, that way it's really easy to get to. 
and then we're going to run our parking brake wire in our vehicle and once again just like the antenna i put a little crimp connector on there that way we can disconnect this harness without having to pull a whole wire out of the car all right now that we have successfully completed our wiring harness let's get back to the vehicle and get everything installed all right now we have our wiring harness complete let's go ahead and get it all plugged into the vehicle it's pretty straightforward these plugs only have one other plug they'll fit into so it's really hard to mess this up now I went ahead and ran the parking brake wire down to the parking brake and made my connection. And uh, I went ahead and put another crimp cap on this end of it. That way it's disconnectable. So if we ever need to service this for whatever reason, we can easily do this without having to pull the wire out of the dash. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we make that connection now. And then just kind of look through, make sure everything else is plugged in. We have our microphone, it's perfect. So let's go ahead and uh, grab the factory radio, get it mounted in the dash kit and we'll get it in the dash. All right, now that we have all of our wiring done in the vehicle, we can get our radio mounted in the dash kit. Now, I've already kind of got it started here, but if you follow the directions uh, that come with the dash kit that tell you how to take the factory radio out, they're also going to tell you how to mount the radio into the dash kit. So this one's pretty simple. It just has two side brackets that we use the four included screws that come with our radio to mount them to the bracket. What's also really nice about this radio is it's extremely shallow, so uh, it's going to be really easy to fit all this harness into the vehicle. Because as you notice when you pulled your factory radio out, chances are it's a lot deeper than what this one is. So we'll have that mounted in, and then the way this dash kit works is the trim ring that is the same size as the factory radio. After we get this mounted in, it, this will just click into place, and then we're done. Let's go ahead and get it installed. All right, so let's get this all plugged in. Pretty straightforward, just like the vehicle side. All these harnesses only have one place to plug in. They are all labeled. Just make sure that you get everything plugged in and make sure you also get it all plugged in all the way. Because sometimes if you maybe didn't get a plug all the way in, you might have some weird intermittent issues. So just always double check your connections. Now something else I wanna notate here is on the back of the radio, you're gonna have two ports right next to each other. One of them labeled mic, one of them labeled W remote. That's wired remote, it's actually your steering wheel control input. Now these are both the same size, so you wanna make sure you plug the right plug into the right connector. So from our harness here, we do have a steering wheel control wire, which is right here. So we're gonna go ahead and get that plugged into wired remote. And then we'll get our microphone plugged into mic. You always you wanna double check, you always make sure you get these two plugged in correctly, because if you mix it up, your microphone won't work and your steering controls won't work. So you want to always double check that. And it looks like we have everything that's left is our USB cable. Our camera's already good to go. We have our module plugged in for our steering controls and we're just gonna follow the directions that came with whatever module you have and get it programmed. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this thing in the dash. And because of the shallow radio depth that we have, it makes this pretty easy to get everything to fit. You should not have to be cramming any wires or anything or pushing hard on the radio to get it in the dash. We'll just get it screwed in. Now we're about to fire this radio up to test it. Now, depending on your vehicle, if you have any other factory panels unplugged, and in this case, we have our AC controls as well as the airbag light. We wanna make sure to plug this in before we turn the vehicle back on, because if you don't do that in some cars, it will probably throw an error light on your gauge cluster. So always make sure you have everything plugged in. All right, now that we have everything put back in the dash, let's go ahead and reconnect the negative terminal on the battery. All right, let's fire it up, make sure everything's working. Turns on, that's a good sign. All right, first screen's gonna pop up, it's gonna ask you what language. We are English. And then you're there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the volume down, but we're gonna go to a radio station to make sure we have sound, which we do. And uh, then at this point, make sure your volume's working, make sure all your speakers are playing. And then we're also gonna make sure our steering wheel controls are working. Looks like those are good. We're gonna go through the settings. First things first, let's uh, test this camera. Let's put the car in reverse. We're already set, there's the camera. And now let's uh, go to our menu and go through our settings here. Now you might notice, hey, those a lot of these are, uh, grayed out. Why is that? Well, in order for you to access all the settings on an Alpine radio, you're going to need to enable the parking brake, then disengage it, then re-engage it and leave it on. And then when 
you do that, you'll see that everything lights up and now you can go through all your settings. So you can go through and customize all your sound settings. You can even go through your camera settings. Um, this is where you can set up if you wanted to do front and rear camera. You can, uh, of course, go into your system settings. Be sure to set the clock. Uh, this is where you can just make your adjustment on your clock. Pretty straightforward when you're done, just hit OK. And then you're set. The next thing we're going to be testing is our connectivity to our phone. So let's see how CarPlay works. OK, so we have our iPhone here and we actually plugged our lightning to USB cable into the USB port. Let's get it plugged into the phone. And you'll see the CarPlay fires right up and then you're good to go. Pretty simple. If you are experiencing any connectivity issues with your Android or iPhone, the first thing to look at would be the USB extension cable. If you're using an extension cable like the ones you see on the screen, or even the extension cable that we include in the box, try plugging your phone's USB cable directly into the back of the radio to see if that solves your problem. Depending on the cable you are using, sometimes USB extension cables can add too much length and cause phones to not have a reliable connection. Now let's say you're not going to be using CarPlay, but you want to still have hands-free and maybe stream Bluetooth. We're going to need to pair the Bluetooth from your phone to the radio. That's going to be really easy to do, Don. Depending on your phone, you'll just need to go into your Bluetooth settings. And on the radio, we're going to go into Setup. We're going to go into Bluetooth, and you'll see Devices. We're going to hit the plus sign on the very top device here. And it's going to say that our LXW650 is now discoverable. So uh, we're going to look on our uh, phone here and we'll see that, hey, we have an ILX W650. We're going to click that. We're going to see that the pass keys are the same, so we'll hit pair. It's going uh, ask us if we want to sync favorites. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And then we're done. We are now paired. And as you can see by the music note, we are paired for uh, music streaming. And by the phone icon, we're paired for hands-free phone calling. It's that easy. All right, now that we have tested everything and everything is functioning like it should, we can go ahead and button up this install and put the vehicle back together. It's going to be pretty straightforward because it's going to be just in the reverse order that it was when you took the radio out. And that's it. You're done. Not too bad, right? So you might be asking yourself, hey, what can I do next? Well, look no further than the KTA 450. This is a four channel amplifier that fits behind your radio. Now, why would you want this? Well, let's say you're looking for maybe a little more volume. Maybe you're upgrading your speakers and you want to give them some more power. This is a four channel amplifier that is rated at 50 watts by four and it mounts right to the back of the ILX W650. So it takes up no room in your car. It's really simple to install. It's very powerful. It's actually about three times as powerful as the internal amplifier in the W650. Let's say maybe you're looking for more bass. Well, you can use the KTA 200M. It's the same size as this amplifier. It also mounts to the back of your radio and it's gonna give you a 200 watt true power amplifier for a subwoofer. Now something really cool about both of the KTA amplifiers is they have a technology in them called DPP. It stands for Dynamic Peak Power. What that's gonna do is it's gonna dynamically give you about double the power of what we rated. So when we said that this guy is 50 watts by four, it's actually gonna perform very similar to a 100 watt by four amplifier. Now the monoblock, that's right, we said it was 200 watts, that's actually gonna act sometimes like a 400 watt amplifier dynamically with your music. So it's pretty cool options uh, that you can look into for a future upgrade down the road. Thank you for taking the time and watching this video. Hopefully your install went smoothly. If for whatever reason you still have some questions or need some assistance, feel free to reach out to the Alpine Tech Support at 1-800-TECH-101. You can also feel free to check out our knowledge base at kb.alpine-usa.com. If you need to locate your local authorized Alpine retail specialist, you can find them on our website at alpine-usa.com forward slash stores. We appreciate you choosing Alpine. Enjoy your new radio. Thank you.